So I'm going to share with you a process. I'm going to try and attempt to get some rosemary cuttings. I want to reduce the size of my rosemary plants out there so I can get a cold frame over the top of them. So I'm seeing these things, self-watering little containers, and I need some decent dirt. So I'm getting this old dried out seedling dirt. I'm going to put it in the bottom, and then I'll show you what I do next. So I didn't need very much at all. That is just to have some kind of fertility. So I'll show you what I'm going to do next. An old bag of sand stored back here in the nether regions of the greenhouse. So I'm just putting a couple inches of just coarse sand. I'll be back with you. Alright, so here we are. I've got, as you can see, maybe three inches of coarse sand with a little bit of just good potting mix at the bottom. It's been amended. I balanced it out with, you know, some store bought stuff. I do use it on my seedlings sometimes, just so they get a good strong start. So this is my cold frame, which is half of a plastic bucket. Rosemary here, um, I generally lose it. Sometimes it makes it, but it struggles. I don't know if it's my variety. Um, I know people that have had success in this zone, but it's more in protected little microclimates, like up against the house, facing south type thing. Rosemary can take a, a light frost and maybe even a hard frost, but it gets down really cold, it, you could lose your rosemary. Just depends. I haven't had a lot of luck keeping it alive in the garden, whereas my oregano will generally make it, and my lemon balm and all my mints and all that will make it. My thyme struggles and my rosemary struggles. My sage usually makes it. Not always, but, and I don't know if it's a moisture problem or a temperature problem could be both. At any rate, I would normally dig this up and put it in the greenhouse, but I'm going to go ahead and try to keep it in the ground and just make sure I get a cold frame on it when it does get really cold. So all I'm going to do is take my side cutters. Trusty side cutters. I like side cutters for this job. You can use proper things and see where the wood is. I'm going to just try to take it back to that fork. Now I'm going to be shrinking the size of my plant so it will easily take this cover. And then this rosemary, you would just strip the stem. Hold on one sec. You could even save your rosemary if you wanted to, but I've got a lot right now. You just take your stem. Push it all the way down to the bottom. So I need about three inches clear. And I'll just do that. So I will just do that many times over. Reduce the height of this plant. Take some of the lush tips off because you can see they're looking pretty good. I'll take those lush tips and leave more of the heavy woody part there in hopes that we'll overwinter it. But if we do lose it, we'll have all these cuttings that will probably make it. I've tried doing it other ways. I've never tried it this way. I want something that I can just water like every two weeks or something and not have to worry about it. So I think you could fill this up. It'll stay moist enough. Maybe once a week you want to check it. But if, if you forget and it goes two weeks, probably be all right. Rosemary is fairly hardy. But you want to make sure to encourage those roots. And rosemary is kind of slow to take root. But I have done it before. It does work. So... Anyway, I'll show you when I get this all done. Get my cold frame on, even though it doesn't need it today. Just make sure. And my other rosemary here. I tried to put it in a favorable position, kind of a southerly exposure, with the hill behind it a little bit, so it gets some protection. But I'm not sure a really cold, wind-blown day may just take it out. So definitely, and I just need to take a little off. So instead of just taking it off and using it as spice, which we have plenty of, I'm going to take it off and try to make more plants with it. So it doesn't take that long. It's not a difficult process. Just keep it, keep it moist. So I'll show you when I, I might end up having to do two of these little containers. So I'll let you see that. So anyway, here's the idea. I cut it back enough. You can see that. That will pump this. Not really hurting the plant, but see. 
I'll cut that one back too. Just shrink it down, cut, and mostly just try to keep the straight ones. If they have a curve to them or whatever, just cut them. And depending on your variety, if you have, it's always best to cut it back at a fork if you can, but I didn't necessarily do that on everything. Sometimes I just cut it right in the middle, like, see how it's got that like, curviness? You just cut it right there, that way it'll go in the dirt. So, it's just not a very exact thing. And I'm really cramming them in here. I think I'm going to try to get them all in one container, just so I don't have so much to look after. I'll just water these very heavily. They can sit in a lot of water. So keeping it full is not going to hurt them at all. It's mostly just moist sand that you want to keep them in. I just put a little fertility in the bottom because I think it helps. Give them just a little bit more like hydroponically to just get some more nutrition in the stems and then get some nitrogen hopefully. Got the mineral salts in there and try to get it to. And I'll probably go ahead and get some little pieces of willow and stick them in here. Because that willow, as you might know, is pretty much the same as rooting hormone. So I put some willow in there and that might help them root as well. So I'll show you when I'm done. I'm not going to have the cold frames on because it's so warm. But they're going to just be sitting here ready when we have a cold day. We'll just pop them over that. We'll shape the earth a little bit around it to make sure that we're sealing out any drafts make sure we can get a good you know add a zone to it or whatever it's you know that's probably enough for this rosemary just protect it from really harsh wind the harsh cold drying winds that might take it out so i'm going to finish this up and then i'll just show you a little video when i get it in the greenhouse and get it watered uh, i forgot to tell you i'm out here Listening to my radio, I'm a Bay of Fang. A really good communication device for a local area. Drinking my coffee, saving my little strippings from the, the little cuttings. So I'll just save that and take it in the kitchen. So, we were speaking of willow, I just wanted to show you these. These were little twigs that I just cut off the main tree here and just stuck them in the ground. And now you can see, that's green. These are green. These suckers are alive. Very easy to clone willow. They don't all make it. And at the time I put grape cuttings and cherry, apple, I put them in there hoping that maybe the willow would encourage them, but no go. So I'm just going to cut some of these sucker growth, as long as they have green on them. This one I cut them, I'll be able to tell. And I'm just going to stick them in there with that rosemary. So I might get some little, little willow trees out of it. But the main thing is, is just to encourage some rooting. So anyway, you're out hiking, you can just grab a few pieces of willow, take them home. Stick them in a wet spot, you'll have more willow tree. So actually a couple of those were dead. Pretty simple to tell when you're cutting them though, what's alive and what's dead. So I'll just cut these into little sticks and basically just stick them in there. In the, in the sand with the rosemary cuttings and we'll also see how that goes. So there you have it. And I tried different sizes of the twigs for the the, the willow, if they got too thin, I didn't put them in. But we'll just see which ones actually like to take root. I imagine some of them will probably make it. Not all of them. So, interesting little experiment here. So I'm just moving the greenhouse and fill it up with as much water as it'll hold without running out. And I'm gonna move on to other projects. This was kind of a side project. When I was out here, I'm doing my winter solstice wild edible walkthrough. I saw these rosemaries, I'm like, I want to try to save those. I had forgotten about them and I just prioritized this little project. So either way, I'll probably have some rosemary and I have that nice little pile, which that'll last us a little while in the kitchen. We don't go through it that fast, really. So we're pretty well stocked on rosemary. Maybe we should use it a little more. 
So anyway, I'll share some other projects with you a little bit. Ah, uh, touch of gray. Who has that these days? I found this um, little piece of garlic that was just sitting there, so I moved it uphill just a little bit, put it a little bit deeper, just to save that bed. I was right here, why not? So not much water really. I filled it up until it was running out. And we'll just try to keep that sand moist. A little bit of an earthquake on that side. But here it is in the, in the greenhouse. Sorry. So, there she sits. Here's the peppers, by the way. And I found a palm tree that wasn't dead. Surprisingly. I mean, it had got brought in the greenhouse, but it wasn't watered. There's a green heart to it, so I stuck it in water. So I've watered the peppers, and some of them have no green. So they're obviously going to be dead. But I've heard not to water them at all, but I, it's been like five weeks, so I went ahead and watered them. I think they needed it, just looking at them. So may have reinvigorated them somewhat. So I'll water them again in about two weeks just maybe a month we just we're going to keep a little water on them i think that's what they need and i never came back and pruned them so anyway the ones that died it's good i didn't prune them the ones that lived will be a lot more of a pleasure to prune when you see little green shoots on them so maybe i'll keep half of them i don't know Part of my project here is to try to get all the tools out of the greenhouse and into the... If it's frequently used, I'm going to try to put it in Tom's car. If it's not frequently used, I'm going to try to put it in my storage container. And I try to get it out of the greenhouse and maybe... I don't know why I'm even talking about building more greenhouses. I need to use the ones I have. So I need to get my pots maybe in here and get some something going in them. Just a little bit of lettuce or something. So, I don't know if I'd ever shared up there along that. That's a solar collector. It's hooked to a fan, which blows up into the other part of the house there. So, the, this warmest air of the greenhouse goes into these little baffles. And then there's a thermostatically controlled fan that I have wired into like a duct fan like this. Just a regular old duct fan. I picked that up at Goodwill for $1.99 probably a $25 fan so anyway I got a fan like that and it's hooked to this we actually have a remote for it and upstairs that can turn it on when it's warm enough in here it'll blow free basically free air free warmth up into that room so um, it does help it's surprisingly you can get you can get some BTUs out of it so I thought you might find that interesting I'm going to do it on a bigger scale. I think everybody should actually have that kind of setup. You could do a DC powered fan, totally solar. It would be completely off grid and you could have it thermostatically controlled where it would come on and just blow without any kind of remotes or anything. So, but just the way we're doing it, the remote is a better idea. So anyway, and that's not a very good job. So what I was wanting to do is actually bring that all the way down to the floor here in the door and just that back part would be more um, insulated than even this front part and maybe put some heating pads and extra lighting in this area and do like even maybe like lemon trees bananas stuff like that that you would put outside and then bring in have a little area where you could really keep them warm and I actually want to change that out for that twin wall I got Two layers of polycarb on these openings I'm just basically under a porch here I'd like to get all these shelves out of here put some polycarb up and then I could use this more for plants along here and it'll brighten up this little dreary little space here so this is kind of this was the end of the house where these bricks were and there was just plywood doors across this so I tore all that out built that little greenhouse which should have some but what I am doing is making sure to get rid of the rodents because they find ways in. If you have dirt floor, they find ways in. And I will recommend that Ramek rat bar.
they they go after it aggressively and they share it and then it interferes with their vitamin K and they just die, bleed to death. But you gotta do something and growing seedlings in a greenhouse and to have rats come in, it is so aggravating. They'll come in and just munch down on all your brassicas or your lettuce. Uh, so I'm making sure to wipe them out before I and you know, I don't even know where they get in, to be honest. Unless it's through that little hole over there. So Anyway, to be continued with the, the greenhouse. I got, got called for breakfast, so I'm going to go get my breakfast. Then I'm going to start on. I'll continue with my organizing. And I'll probably drag the boys out and we'll put this post in. Right, hey, y'all. I'm going to go here. Didn't ever get to the post over there. Got the Pink Floyd playing on the radio. Got the fender back on the beast here. And the top. And I did get a 12, 400 watt inverter here, TP, 30 amp charge controller, 12 volt, 24 volt, does its own automatic. And we have the battery, solar panels here, solar panels hooked to the battery with this alligator clip. We've got it zip tied. There's my panel wires. And they're all up here. So that's, I guess it's 15 watts panel. 45 watts at 12 volts is what I'm guessing I'm getting here. So here's how I, here's a little angle iron that came with the Harbor Freight. This is an old, old style, way back, at least over 10 years ago. Anyway, I just zip tied those on. To the rack and then I on the top you can see I think just use some of those metal self-tapping screws to hold the middle sections down and I also use the same screws to hold this brick tie on here and then I brought the brick tie out folded it over and screwed it in so that's kind of like a clip catching that groove so same thing on the other side. I, as we come around, here's the decision I made to how I'm going to use the space in the car. And most of this is empty. I haven't started putting stuff in here yet. So I'm going to have this to set up like this. So here's the other side, the same thing. It's got the self-tapping screws folded over. It, it's pretty stout. I don't see any trouble. So I went to put the uh, hitch on, and it's got this tiny little thing here. So I'm going to have to figure that out. And I have to figure out how I'm going to hitch the wagon to it. But I'm going to get the wagon. figured out so that's all that's all I've accomplished and I did the little organizing and start getting these tools put up so anyway this is a weak battery it keeps going dead on me so those panels are just laying around and I'm not going to time into my main system because they're just too tiny you can't match up these little bitty panels with great big panels so I figured just mounting them up there on the top of the car put them to use to keep this battery topped off and then I'll be able to run like a radio or charge my batteries since this is my mobile toolbox I figured charging those Milwaukee batteries would be a good deal so I'm gonna try in Tulsa with uh, two panels they wouldn't quite do it but I think three will and if not I might tie in some more panels or whatever we'll, we'll see whatever I need to do but, we will I'll just shut that off. We don't need it. Oh, yeah, I have a problem. I don't know if the charge controller is no good. When I get the ground, I got both. I got a lead going to the battery. Or, no, it's going to the charge controller. From the inverter to the charge controller. 
Then I also put the leads back on to go straight to the battery. Now watch this. When I unhook this negative, it dies. And I have the negative hook here. So either this wire is shot or there's something wrong with the charge controller. I think it's probably the charge controller. But it is topping off the battery, so we'll take that. So if I have to, I'll just leave the negative because it should break the circuit on the positive side. I think the charge controller will. I'm not sure. If not, I'll just get a new charge controller. So anyway, and I was thinking about mounting it to this air box, but I guess I won't poke any holes in original factory equipment. Probably not very smart. So I don't know where else to mount it, unless I mount it under here to these ribs or something. Perhaps you could do something like that, I don't know. Maybe I'll just leave it laying there. I'm not going to get much mileage on this car anyway, so it's going to run around the land here. But there's the mobile toolbox. Been working on it. It's complaining at me. Anyway, that's Wiggle out for now. I will talk to you later.